Hey, good morning. Will God stand against the rebels for adversity? Our reading is the last part of chapter 44 of the book of Jeremiah, verses 26 to 30. Therefore hear the word of the Lord, all Judah, who dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, says the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God lives. Behold, I will watch over them for adversity and not for good, and all the men of Judah who are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by famine until there is an end of them. Yet a small number who escape the sword shall return from the land of Egypt to the land of Judah, and all the remnant of Judah who have gone to the land of Egypt to dwell there shall know whose words will stand, mine or theirs. And this shall be a sign to you, says the Lord, that I will punish you in this place, that you may know that my words will surely stand against you for adversity. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will give Pharaoh Hophra, king of Egypt, into the hand of his enemies and into the hand of those who seek his life, as I gave Zedekiah, king of Judah, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, his enemy who sought his life. Although God respects the free choice that he's given to each one of us, it's also true that by creation and after we sin, then by redemption, twice over we belong to God. I mean, he has rights to us as being our creator and our redeemer, even though he's given us free will. I mean, think about it. He delivered his people from Egypt. They didn't deliver him, but he delivered them. So then when they rebel... He, God, is within his rights to bring adversity upon them for their perfidy. Perfidy is one of those words you never hear anymore. Perfidy, it means basically to be unfaithful, to be disloyal. When we think what God has done for us, and then the way we often have gone back and treated him in response, perfidy is a pretty good word for that. It's an awful word to think that the God of heaven, that we would treat him with perfidy. But look, this is what God's going to do to these people. They've broken his covenant, and then he says there at verse 26, you know, I'm going to take my name out of their mouth. The, the name of the covenant God, he says, they're not going to be using my name anymore. They have broken the covenant. They're out of the covenant. They've, they've thrown it away. And yet he says also, he's going to preserve a remnant. There will be a group who turn back to him and are faithful, and he will get them back home. It gets kind of complicated sometimes when part of the people are faithful and part of the people are unfaithful. But God is fair and he knows what he's doing, how he treats the different parts, the different parts of the kingdom of Judah here. It's wonderful news that God always preserves a remnant. Praise be to his name, mercy and thanksgiving to him. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, Help us to be faithful instead of unfaithful. Help us to be true instead of untrue. Help us. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you that you promise you'll save a remnant. Help us to be part of your remnant. And so, Lord, these, these are things we're asking for because of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, always remember, God is still developing a remnant, a people, men and women, who are willing to put faith into action and allow him to change our hearts. God be with you today.